Okay, we will move on to a very difficult example about the shearing stress. The shearing stress is a very difficult example, but I believe it really helps us analyze what the problem is and what dimensions we're dealing with. We are going to look at the shearing stress of a rotating disc. So this disc is going to rotate with omega, and the angular rotation is going to be omega, and it's going to be a film of oil over here. Now, as we know that as the disc rotates with angular velocity omega, yes, angular velocity omega, there will be a shearing stress formed between the, the disc and the liquid. Now, I would just like to clarify that, you see, the shearing stress applies the force to the liquid. Right? But by, not, by, by Newton's third law, the liquid also applies that same shearing stress onto the disc. But we, we can say that it's gonna, there's going to be a transfer of power because the disc is going to apply that shearing stress onto the liquid, which is going to give it some sort of power. I don't know, maybe heat or what, but it's really doing mechanic work onto the film. So that's what I want to find out. The power absorbed by the film over there. And the steps we're going to do is to find the velocity gradient, tangential shearing stress, tangential shearing force, and the power absorbed. So without further ado, let's start with the first one, velocity gradient. Again, the velocity gradient is that we're dealing in the z direction over here like this. I hope you can see that. I know that this, we are seeing it in a three-dimensional view, but really the velocity gradient is the change in the velocity as we move out the liquid like so. And we have also known that the, the velocity over here is going to be equal to zero. Again, does that make sense? Yes, it does. Because the rotating disc would turn the liquid only at the top and at the bottom it will just remain zero. So that's what we want to find. Now, how good is our angular velocity? Well, we know that if it rotate with omega angular, angular velocity, the tangential velocity is equals to r times omega, which is written like so, like this. So as we approach a certain point onto the disc, maybe I should draw it in, in a plain view. The disc is rotating in this way. Now, as we move in a certain r away from the center, this is gonna move with a tangential velocity of r omega. So, our velocity gradient is basically the velocity at the top minus the velocity at the bottom, which in this case is zero, and divided by z, which is the distance. That's why it's called the velocity gradient. So, the velocity gradient, which we will just put as d, sorry, the velocity, yeah, velocity gradient, which we will put as dv dz, is going to be equals to r omega divided by z. Yep, correct. R omega divided by z. That is going to be the velocity gradient. Okay. Now, the next step is to find out what is the... The next... Okay, the... Shit. Okay, this is our velocity gradient. Now, I want to point one more step to say that the velocity gradient is dependent on R. Why? Because if I were to move away, further away from the center, the velocity at the top over here is going to be certainly going to be more because of this equation over here. And then when I take, then that's why the r is over here like that. So the velocity gradient is dependent on r, okay? But then z is going to be a constant because z is the distance of the two discs. So that's our velocity gradient. Now the tangential shearing stress. What is the tangential shearing stress? The tangential shearing stress again is given by tau and is going to be equals to mu, the, vis the viscosity, multiplied by the velocity gradient. And it's as easy as mu r omega divided by z. Okay? Again, shearing stress now is dependent on r. So the shearing stress is going to be different as we move to different points of the liquid as r increases. It's going to be different because that is the principle of circular motion. So, Tau is the shearing, ten, um, tangential shearing stress and is equals to viscosity r omega divided by z. Now, this is where calculus comes in. Tangential shearing force. We define a small force as df, right? df is going to be equals to tau multiplied by the area. Okay, I hope you can see that. Now, we only can analyze it where there is constant shearing stress. Does that make sense? Because that's the only way that we can apply the formula. So how we need to go about doing it is to consider a disc like so. Because this disc from here to here is going to be labeled as radius of r. Excuse me. Okay, this disc here is going to be labeled radius of r from the center to this. Now we know all the points around the disc will have the same shearing stress. Why again? Because it's dependent on r. So we select a certain r, we get the constant, I mean roughly speaking, the constant shearing stress around the disc, 
And now for the area, we will consider a DR around this like so. Where DR is again small. So we know that this area over here has the constant shearing stress given by here, right? So, but, but what is the area? Well, the area we can simply put as 2 r pi or 2 pi r multiplied by dr okay which is basically the circumference multiplied by the depth of dr during a dr small and we'll put tau inside like that okay and now this is df right df so now we want the tangential shearing force of the whole disk we will integrate this from zero you must have guessed it big r where big r is the radius of the whole disk and then yeah, and then we will integrate this accordingly. We can bring out the constants, which is basically this, or oh, everything except the r. So we can bring out the constants. We got two pi viscosity angular speed divided by z integrate from zero to r of r squared dr, and that will give us. If my calculations serve me correct, I'll just have a quick check. F is gonna be equals to two omega. 2 mu omega pi r3 which makes sense because we bring the power up by, by 1 divided by 3z okay there we go that would be the tangential shearing force of the whole disk again using calculus considering a small strip because it's only in this small strip where the shearing stress is, is the same because shearing stress is dependent on r shearing stress is dependent on r Okay, I hope you can see that. Lastly, the power absorbed. Now, what do we know about power? Power is the rate of change of work. That's the uh, way of writing it. The differential way of writing it is d, dp, uh, put power for clarification, is going to be equal to df times by velocity. Now, I hope that makes sense because, you see, if I were to have d work, a small change in work is equal to df times distance. We know work is the force times distance. I'm basically just dividing this part by t and dividing this part by t so I get the small change in power and I get velocity, change in distance times time. So this is the formula for power. And likewise, we just simply substitute the usual equations of df, which I've erased it away, but df is equals to viscosity omega r divided by z 2 pi r dr okay this is df a small change again a small change sorry a small tangential shearing force okay where it's dependent on r because r is gives the shearing stress i multiplied by velocity but what is the velocity now the velocity is omega r because it depends on where again it depends on where we are on the disk and then so the power is going to be integrating this which i will just cancel here the, the omega sorry this is the omega here capital omega so viscosity omega squared we got a pi and it will integrate r squared d, dr okay and this one will just simply give us is it dr or d sorry dr r cube r cube okay this one will simply give us pi viscosity omega squared r4 divided by 2z and there we go solving the finding the power absorbed by the fluid by the rotating of the disc with uh, angular speed of capital omega okay so this is one of the unique questions because remember the tau okay is not constant throughout the whole disc tau is equal to viscosity d v dz but v is in this case is dependent on the radius from the center so we're going to get a different value of tau each time we we find the, a different radius and that's why we need to use methods of calculus which I guess shows the importance of calculus but what's more important is solving this equation right here okay so there we go um, quite a difficult one but I hope you can understand it